Hello everyone, uh, Cliff back again, uh, relatively soon actually, well, hopefully within a month, assuming this video goes well. Uh, I just want to start this video off by saying thank you to everybody for your <laughs> your nice comments and everything. I really, I really appreciate it. Uh, again, I don't expect this to ever be anything professional or, you know, legit, like other YouTubers do this as a career. This is just kind of like a side project, I guess. My, my like I said many times, my, um, really my passion is in hardware, really not the whole video making process. But... Okay, enough rambling, let's get into the video. So in front of you is a mystery CPU because uh, I can't zoom in on my camera video app just yet. But um, this is a Xeon Gold 6140. So this is a 18-core uh, <laughs> CPU built on Skylake, so first-gen Skylake on the 14 nanometer process, 18 cores, 36 threads with a turbo boost up to 3.7 gigahertz, I believe. Base clock is uh, 2.3 gigahertz. And this is on the um, the massive um, LGA 3467 socket. Let me read my notes. 3647 36, socket. Um, for comparison, here, one second, let me put that down. Uh, here is an LGA uh, 771 base Xeon. This is a core two base. Um, look at that. <laughs> it's, a, it, it's at least double the size, if not maybe three or four times the volume of that. Um, old LGA 771 CPU, so it's uh, ridiculous how big they've gotten. <laughs> and uh, interesting fact about the LGA 3647 socket is that there is no ILM. So what that means is that the um, the CPU is actually held down by the heatsink. There is you, you don't actually load it into a plate like an LGA 775 or 771 CPU where you put down a metal ILM to kind of lock into place. It's handled by the CPU heatsink, so it's a interesting you know dynamic with these bigger CPUs. Getting into more of the details of this, this uses um, this has AVX, AVX2, and AVX 512 support, and the main feature is that it's Windows 11. Uh, Compatible or Windows 11 certified. It's on the Intel uh, or Microsoft support list of Intel CPUs. So this is a CPU that you could run a normal Windows 11 install on, and it won't uh, complain saying, "Hey, you're running a too old of platform." So these are kind of still in production for a lot of environments right now, mainly because uh, it has some pretty good features still. Oh, you get six-channel DDR4, uh, so six-channel at 2666 megahertz. Uh, so not the full, I, I guess what I call the full speed DDR4, which was the last server platforms were at 3200 megahertz. But 2666 at six channel will give you plenty of memory bandwidth. Of course, you won't be able to go any faster than that. You won't be able to overclock any platform that runs a CPU. Get this out of here. <laughs> that runs the CPU of this generation. The first, this is a first gen one. The second gens are also, I mean, everything's kind of Skylake based. The second gen CPUs are a bit more expensive. I believe they're probably uh, either there's a new feature sets that uh, people are looking for, or maybe just they have higher clock speeds and they're, you know, the, the Halo, uh, you know, specs of the CPU socket. So people will probably are more, you know, are, are looking to get those more and they're probably still being run. Whereas this, I think I got for like $18, $19, dirt cheap for eight, 18 cores and 36 threads. Uh, so I'm going to suggest, is this kind of the new kind of budget platform for servers? Because I'm, I'm starting to find a hard time to recommend uh, Sandy Bridge and Ivy Bridge based Xeons, the V2 and the uh, the original E5 series, because it's kind of getting a little too old. Also, I have a feeling that AVX2 is going to be a bigger requirement. So nowadays, I'm setting the minimum as um, an E5 V3 or an E5 V4, and let's we'll see what these uh, Skylake based Xeons could do. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get the test system out onto my lovely workbench right now, and I'll show you what we'll be using for this video. Okay, so what do we have on the table that's uh, kind of out of frame and also causing my camera? I still got to fix this focus issue. So the, the problem with filming is I, I'm using a Sony smartphone, and the I'm using a, an actual uh, a wireless mic so I don't sound terrible like I used to in my old videos. And I need an application that supports both the video features built into the Sony phone and the audio recording. I could use the Sony Studio app that they have on it, but the color gamut is terrible, and I, I've been trying to adjust that with my, not much luck. So, I mean, I could, you can see me kind of moving the camera around right now. But, um, so, I can have to deal with it until I get a new, probably a better setup. If I ever get a better setup, uh, it's still TBD. Anyway, uh, this is a Z8 G4. Um, it's in kind of some bad condition. You'll see uh, a little bit more of that as I flip it around. I actually have two of these. Uh, the reason why is because the first one, I'm going to splice the picture in hopefully now.
in the first, because the first one was, um, it was shipped to me with that, which is, I, I have no idea what the seller was thinking. It was in pristine condition. I paid a little bit of a premium to get that one because I got a little bit of OCD with that. And um, they sent it like that. I have no idea what they were thinking. Luckily, they gave me a mostly a ref they gave me, I think, a 50% refund. And I ended up buying a second one. And that second one wasn't perfect. But then I ended up taking the parts from this first one and the second one and move merging them together so i made i have one unit that i'm using now and this is kind of i guess i guess my spare unit but let's go ahead it's got some nice uh see if you guys got some nice grip handles oh, let's put it on its side here let's see is my camera get this into a better kind of there we go it's a little bit better you can see um hmm, you can't tell from this angle because i have it on the right side but this foot was destroyed during shipping like this whole part i had a been a long story, long story. So, all right, let's go ahead and pop this side cover off. And you can see that everything's kind of very nicely laid out in here. Um, these are all kind of, you know, here's your drive covers. I mean, your drive bays slides in nicely. It's all very kind of posh, as the British would say, with its, uh, I can't, can't get it back on, I can't get it back in on camera, you know? It's probably a problem with another field more than mine, but, um, <laughs> Right, we're gonna open up a, this metal cover is where you have your um, CPUs. Oh man, this is really focus, focus. And um, here I'll, I'll flip it around for a second. But let's get the um, PCI cover off. So let's take this guy off too as well. There you go. There's a PCI cover, PCIe slots, and slide this on down. Angle the camera a little bit better. Okay, you can see the system now. Uh, <laughs> obviously, or open at least. We have four PCIe six plus two pin connectors, which is nice. You don't, on the Z840, um, you only had six pin connectors and you needed an adapter if you wanted to use anything that's eight pin, but luckily you could use up to, uh, as many devices consume four eight pin connections, which I guess is almost one GPU nowadays. Plenty of PCIe slots. Those are all PCIe Gen 3, I believe. Maybe one is a Gen 2 for the um, Thunderbolt controller. This is the bottom one all the way here. Can't really see. Currently, we have a, a little dinky uh, Quadro P400 installed. This was what came with the system. Uh, there's a PCIe by 8 slot, which I believe this is a by 4 slot that translates to an 8 slot. Let's see if I can slide this down a little bit more. Oops. Oh, man. <laughs> there you go. There's me bumping the camera. Oops. Sorry, everyone. Uh, it can't, oh, man, I really need it kind of like centered over there. Oh, it's okay. Focus. Uh, there's, then there's three by 16 slots and another by four slot and another by four slot. So plenty, plenty of PCIe expansion, pretty good room to fit full size cards in here. Uh, and we have obviously, uh, our kind of our star show. Let me flip this around. Actually bear with me. Oh, yeah, it's nice grinding noise on this. Well, at least this is wooden table. I don't like care too much for about. Okay, let's flip around like that. And now you can see the CPUs, or the, the one CPU in this case. Here's our um, CPU. I believe this is only a four core Intel Xeon Silver in here. That's why I kind of bought the system because it was it, I, I didn't really care about what I was going to put into it uh, or what would come with it because I was going to put something into it. And in this case, that um, 6140. The, the system I'm running right now has two of the 6140s. And this one has um, one. Uh, I used uh, kind of parts from both to make one better one. And this is kind of whatever's left over. You can see the massive CPU socket here. And obviously our six channel RAM. So we have um, 12 slots for each CPU. I believe it can support up to 768 gig gigabytes of, I was going to say gigahertz, 768 gigabytes of RAM per CPU. So you could get a whole 1.5 terabytes of RAM in the system, which is pretty impressive. I, I think maybe, yeah, I think it's 768. Um, but you could maybe go up to uh, three terabytes of LR DIMMs. I don't know if first gen Scalable supports those. Those are the 128 gig 3D DIMMs or LR DIMMs, whatever they want to call them. Stick to 64 gig DIMMs and below. Those, those are your safe bet. Right now, I think we have three sticks of 16 gig in here. I'm going to take the sticks of eight gig. I'm going to fully populate this with, I don't know, a random Frankenstein kind of um, configuration of whatever RAM I got after I install a CPU. I have to get out this, um, I think it's a Torx, yeah, Torx T30 screwdriver. That's what's saying on this uh, instruction set. And you have to, tar uh, you know, get them off in a certain, you know, for, or, uh, Man, why? You know, I can't think of the words. Uh, order, a certain order. Wow, you know, terrible. I should make a script for this video. I know, but there's also a couple of um, slots. You can't really see them. They're hidden. Um, they're hidden back here. Uh, they are. They call them flex slots, I believe, or I th maybe that's a Lenovo term. But they're actually PCIe 
by eight slots above here for a uh, NVMe riser card. Uh, currently there's a one terabyte NVMe drive that's uh, over in this little caddy right here. That was from the other Z8 that I ordered. Uh, I'll be using the two terabyte SSD with my OS on it, but I might move some of the games that require an NVMe drive over to the NVMe drive for testing just because, you know, that's modern games now. Can't even run them on hard drive. Okay, so that's a quick overview of the system. Let me go ahead and show you what I'll be putting into it along with the CPU. So I'll be back in just a second. And here are the components we'll be using for the build today. Obviously front and center. This is an RTX 2080 Ti. Uh, the goal of this video is to not be GPU bound. So a 1080p I think will be fine. We'll really be just taxing the uh, 6140 to see how many frames we get. Um, the idea is not really to put like, oh, let's see like a 980 Ti like my last video. Let's put something new in here and let's see what the system could really do. Here are the three six of, uh, these are 16 gig DDR4 DIMMs I pulled out of the um, system already. I have these additional eight gig DIMMs. Uh, they're both the same, focus, focus. They're both the same speed. This timing's 11 and this timing's 12. So, oops. focus, focus. There you go. So I don't know if um, there's gonna be an issue if I run it all together. I'm gonna try first and if not, I'll just roll the, I believe, let me do my math. 32, 48 and I have, um, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So technically I have more RAM in the eight gig sticks and it'll be six channels. So I'll probably roll with that if I can't get them all to work together. What is this? This is 64 and that's 48. So what the, if I'm doing my math, 96 is 32 plus um, 64. And then there's 16 on top of that, which would make it like, what was that like? Um, 114 gig, something like that. Oh man, don't, don't quote me on that. I'm not a math guy, I'm a computer guy, <laughs> barely computer guy. But I'm going to go ahead and start getting this stuff into the system and we'll cut to a everything up and running. Or not everything up and running, everything up installed and then hopefully up and running. So see you in a few. And a quick cut. I just wanted to show you how this um, these CPUs go in. Uh, it's been a little while, so I forgot myself a little bit. Uh, this is our old one. This is the Xeon. It turns out this is, a, if I could get this to show, this is a Xeon Silver 4116. So I think this is a six core CPU, if I remember correctly, or an eight core. But anyway, we're going to be putting in the 6140. So the CPU doesn't have an, uh, the socket doesn't have an ILM. It's just the pins and the board. So what, you, what we have to do is we have to line up this, we have to put the thermal <laughs> thermal compound on the, the heat sink first. Uh, in this case, I used the perfect amount and the perfect um, positioning. Uh, <laughs> just a big slop. And then you have to line up this, um, they call this the carrier board, uh, I believe, with the, um, the CPU. So I want to line up the corner. Uh, so basically I want to put the corner in the corner and then kind of lock this guy into place. Let me see if I can do this on camera. Uh, okay, come on, come on. I shouldn't really be touching the top of the CPU. I might need to clean it again. Uh, come on, I'll hook in there. There we go. So that's a, that's locked into what they call a carrier board now. I might just clean off the CPU again with because I use my dirty fingers to touch it. But then you take this and you just kind of plop this on top of the CPU cooler. So that's that's how you install one of these CPUs. It's a little different uh, if you're coming from a, a pre a, a pre or you know first gen scalable Xeon system. So anyway, just want to show you that really quickly. I'll go ahead and get the CPU in. You can see where I got our GPU in, all our miscellaneous memory modules, and I'll show you that in just a second. And just like magic, we have everything installed. As I said, here's our RTX 2080 Ti. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention earlier, not all the PCIe slots are active unless you have the second CPU. So there's slots uh, that are uh, black and white. The black slots are activated with CPU 0. The white slots are activated with CPU 1 installed. So you just have to make a note of that. You can't use all of them if you only have one CPU installed. But we have our Xeon Gold 6140 installed. So again, 18 cores and uh, 36 threads up from, I believe, I think that was a 6 or 8 core CPU I just took out of here. Uh, again, for like 20 bucks, I think I pick up the CPU for, and we have a random assortment of RAM, <laughs> a very random RAM, uh, uh, I think, you know, under 128 gigs. Let's see if it works. I don't know how well it's going to perform with these timing differences. It doesn't matter too much in um, modern CPUs as much. Uh, old, older CPUs just really care if you, uh, if you start messing with that. But let's see if that works. If not, I'll take out the um, 16 gig sticks and I'll run with the 8 um, eight gig sticks. So I get saturate all those memory channels and get um, more RAM too as well. But anyway, let me get put the system back together and let's boot it up and see if everything works. So um, fingers crossed. I like when something actually works out for once. As if you could see, 
boot it up to the BIOS. And if I go to system information, we have, uh, I think I did my math right, we have our 112 gigs of uh, ECC DDR4 RAM, our Intel Xeon Gold 6140 at 2.3 gigahertz, and the system seems to be working just fine with our upgrade. So we have the 2080 Ti. I also put in the um, two and a half inch SSD that I have all my games and stuff loaded onto. I'm gonna make sure, we can make sure to set that up. If we go to the BIOS setup, and let's go to, um, let's see, it's probably in boot options. Where would boot options be here? Oh yeah, let's do this live, it'll be good, right? All right, boot options. Okay, let's see, boot order. I want to move this up, that is, uh, enter space adjust. Okay, there we go. Yeah, because I don't want to boot off the NVMe disk. I want to use this um, uh, SATA drive as our boot drive. Now let's see. Let's make sure I have all the um, Windows. Uh, okay, I got to make sure I put on all the Windows 10, uh, uh, Windows 11 stuff we need. Let's go check the TPM. Yep, TPM is there. It's available. Okay, perfect. Let's go to boot options again. Uh, maybe I need to go to the secure boot. Yep, secure boot. Let's do. Legacy Secure Boot Disable and Secure Boot Enable. Okay. All right, and then that means I should be able to save and it should boot right into that SSD. Let's go ahead and give it a try. Save, yes, enter, okay. It makes a, the relay makes a pretty good clicking noise in the, um, in the uh, what's it called, uh, in the power supply. I probably don't know if that picked up on the mic. Okay, if I can get the not focus for a second. Okay, let me just make sure this boots up. Oh, no, it's doing some uh, BIOS configuration. All right, so you know what? It's too much. Our camera's going wacky. Let me go ahead and switch over to the direct capture once we're in Windows. All righty, we've booted into Windows without any issue. If I go to About This PC, you can see we're running on the uh, my test account on a Xeon Gold 6140 at 2.3 gigahertz with 112 gigs of memory. I don't know why only 111 gigs are usable. I wonder if that's related to all the fun stuff I was doing with mixing and meshing DIMMs. Let's go ahead and fire up a quick CPU Z. Quick as in, hopefully, relatively quick. Yep, here we go. We got our 6140. It's a uh, Skylake SP based system. And on, on, as previously said, the socket 3647 and 14 nanometer. And we have all of our good instruction sets like AVX, AVX2, and AVX512. I believe AVX512 performance is uh, pretty bad on a CP like this, but I mean, it's there, it exists. And you can see we have our 18 cores, 36 threads. Go to our main board. I just updated the BIOS on the system. Yep, we're running the latest BIOS, which is uh, 2.92. I believe this includes all the Spectre and Meltdown patches, so CP performance will get hit from that, but I want to kind of give it a like, if you want to be secure, this is what you would run. There's utilities to disable that if you need to. In our memory, we have our DDR4, 112 gigabytes, running a hex channel. I believe this is only at 2400 megahertz if I'm doing my math right. No, no, no. That's the uh, wrong wrong one. Yep, to, uh, 13. Yeah, so it's at 266 megahertz. Perfect. Uh, and all those six seem to be working just fine. So slot one, we have our 16 gigs. Slot two, we have our 8 gigs. Huh, gotta love modern CPUs. Go check out a quick uh, CPU Z, I mean GPU Z, sorry. Just updated to the latest um, GPU driver too as well. I always try to do that before I do any testing. And hopefully this time I'll make sure to check my mic settings before I do anything. And we have our 2080 Ti. I can't believe this released our way in um, 2018. Uh, feels just like yesterday that this was on a, you know, Turing was the next new big thing on, uh, on the block. But now it's, you know. Two generations behind. And anyway, uh, got our uh, 11 gig of memory. We got our um, DirectX 12 native support. And uh, I don't know. There you go. There, there's our uh, 2080 Ti. To get this started, I'm going to go ahead and run a Cinebench test. I'm going to use the same version of Cinebench. Uh, no, no. This is actually the latest version. Uh, let me go ahead and run the... Um, I'm going to run the one that I ran on the Z8, uh, Z820. So we have a kind of like a... You can see all my OneDrive files trying to sync over nicely. That's 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 nice. Oh, nah, no, no personal information there. Okay. I think I had another this Max on. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Except uh, I want to kind of close this one out. This one actually launches now. That I have a uh, you know AVX two. Or yeah, it was AVX two. I believe was a requirement. Okay. Yeah, I get it. We get it. We get it. We're gonna do. We're actually gonna go back down to 23. Oh, it's not there. Oh, I thought I had it in documents. What I do with it? Oh, oh well, maybe, maybe I'll just run the latest one then. Screw it. We're doing. We do everything live here. We don't do any planning. 
Uh, I don't know why um, it's locked. Probably because I hit some button. You know what? Go ahead and cut it right now. I'll be back when this is up and running. And only maybe a few seconds after I cut this last clip, uh, we're back up and running. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to start with a multi-core. I mean, this is what the CPU is all about. I'm going to start this. And I'll see you probably all in about 10 minutes. Well, I mean, 10 seconds maybe to you, but 10 minutes for me. <laughs> and after about, I can say about 13 minutes, our Cinebench run finished. And you can see we have 925 points. That puts us in between a 32-core Threadripper at 1201 and an 8-core 5800X at 824. So for 20 something dollars, I can't complain with this multi-core score. Of course, you would need an application that would actually leverage every single, you know, every single one of the 18 cores. But I mean, it handily beats a um, a 1950X, which is you know first gen thread uh, Threadripper, which is you know first gen. Or was it second gen? I think it was first gen. Um, uh, first gen Ryzen. So these kind of you know more you know equal in terms of generation, whereas a second gen thread wrapper we could compare kind of more to a third gen, I believe, um, Intel scalable, or maybe a second gen, uh, somewhere around there. But anyway, you know, I can't complain, 925 points for um, multi-core for, you know, like $27 CPUs, pretty good. I mean, obviously you have to deal with power consumption, but that's, you know, when you're looking for a multi-core application, you're going to deal with power consumption regardless. So. All right, I'm going to go ahead and start the single core. This will probably take a, a much longer time, so I will be back in a few minutes. And after a very long single core test, we have arrived at our score. We got a 54 on our single thread performance. Uh, puts us at the bottom of this little, you know, kind of uh, Cinebench generated ranking list. And you can tell where the uh, downside of the uh, 6140 is, is that it's, you know, it's Sandy Bridge. It's a uh, it's an old architecture. It's clocked low. Um, the reason why it probably beats this uh, 1950x is that the one core could turbo up to 3.9 gigahertz, I believe, or 3.7 gigahertz. So if it's really just turboing on that one core, then it will probably beat the Threadripper because uh, in the first gen Ryzen CPUs, it was still only about Haswell IPC. Or, or a little bit below Skylake, so so this is why it would beat it. But you can see that every other CPU, even like the 9980H, which is a laptop CPU, you know, still blows it out of the water. Um, this is like, I, I could tell that they have the Max, so you can tell that these are the Apple Max. Uh, this is the 2022 Mac right here. Uh, the in, the last Intel one, these are all the, all the Apple Silicon ones. And you can see these apples, these Apple chips are the real deal, but that's not what we're benchmarking today. So, all right, um, that's enough for Cinebench. Let's go ahead. I'm going to start a pass mark, and then hopefully after a DaVinci Resolve transition, you should be seeing pass mark results. And after some uh, interesting pass mark tests, in the, some cases where it blue screened the computer and also rebooted it to a BIOS error, pretty sure there was some issue with some leftover uh, um, kind of sys files or a, something about direct IO was complaining about PCI.sys. Uh, anyway, I wasn't on the system. Was, I reinstalled the program, cleared out a few things, and we're good to go. So I'm guessing it was just some artifacts from a previous system setup. But uh, we could see, um, I don't know how legit this is, but uh, 93rd percentile on the CPU seems a little outlandish for our CPU. I wonder if it's an error or something, but uh, no, maybe, I, it doesn't seem real to me, but maybe it is. Uh, we do have 18 cores and they are Skylake cores and you think a good majority of systems are, you know, eight cores and below, even if they are, you know, newer, um, like, uh, you know, 10th gen, 8th, uh, 9th gen, uh, 11th gen core processors and, you know, older AMD CPUs. But that actually gives us a pretty good boost to everything. 2D graphics mark, I always usually get in the middle of everything, no matter what I benchmark. I don't know how much it really matters. 3D graphics marks are 2080 Ti, still holding uh, a pretty good candle, 83%. I expected um, something around there because obviously it's, you know, a flagship project of two generations ago should still be pretty competitive. Memory mark, I was a little disappointed. It's only 63rd for um, hex channel DDR4 uh, at 266 megahertz. I expected a little bit better, but uh, whatever. It is what it is. Maybe if the RAM was faster, if we had a, I think the second gen's could go up to 290, 
2,933 megahertz uh, DDR4. So it's only this the first trends that are capped at 2,666. This mark, as expected, we're just running a SATA SSD. If I had swapped the MVB in there, probably would bring it up overall, maybe a few more percentile points, but 65%, I can't complain. Uh, the original price I paid for this system was about $800, and that was because it was in good condition, and then uh, they gave it to me for $400 after it was all you know messed up. Yeah, because of the, how it was shipped. So, you know, for that, that price, I uh, got a pretty good system. I mean, I, I had the, 10, uh, the 2080 Ti myself, but, uh, I, you know, you don't really plan on using the system to be your primary gaming machine. You only expect to use it as a machine that you do gaming on. And speaking of gaming, we're going to go into games next. So uh, it's getting a little late today. It's the end of the week. I will probably film maybe one or two sections throughout the week. And I'll make sure to turn my mic on next time because I know everyone just loves to hear my uh, terrible voice. So, cutting to the next segment of games now. All right, now we're literally dropping into a game of Helldivers 2, which I have now added to my test suite. We're playing this at 1080p with a high preset. And um, I don't normally play this game for controller, so it's going to take some getting used to. I'm going to learn this on the fly. You can see our. Um, shoot, there goes the spitter. You can see the, um, what's it called? Uh, how do I sprint? Uh, isn't it usually just this? No, I'm slow to me hit buttons until I figure out which one is my uh, stims. There we go. So you can see we're playing at 1080p, high preset, and our CPU is what's really holding us back here. Um, it, it's weird, so obviously we have a you know, 2080 Ti, so we're not capped anywhere on our GPU, but it seems sluggish compared to my 12900K. I, I, I don't know how to describe it. Like right now, see this is smooth, but I think as soon as we hit something that needs the um, uh, CPU to start loading in additional, you know, physics or area, like right now, do you see that that those dips? But still, we're averaging about 70 FPS. So this is in. I, if I drop the settings, it'll probably be a better experience. Um, also, if I learn the controls on the controller, it'll probably be a better experience for this video right now. But here's just a good idea. Let's see if I could just um, call in a uh, uh, this at least. <laughs> oh, shoot, uh, I'm trying to focus on the video and this at the same time. Yeah, let's just drop a nuke in here and run. Not a nuke, 380mm barrage, you know what it is. So This is what I, I put this on like extreme difficulty anyway, so. Well, this gives a good idea, I just want to see how this explosion, yeah, you can see the FPS dropping, I'm guessing as it calculates the, you know, physics in the background and the mathematics. Our CPU is pegged at its maximum frequencies. You can see it kind of jumping between 3.3 gigahertz to about 3 gigahertz, which is kind of where it turbos up. Uh, good run, good run. And it's also getting pretty hot too, 80 degrees Celsius. I'm surprised the fans haven't kicked in more, but they've been, um, uh, they've been a relatively quiet. So I'm surprised I haven't died yet. But then again, I haven't really, you know, done anything in this. So I don't know how this would affect. I'm only diving solo right now. I don't know how it would be if I um we're with other people, I assume maybe the FPS would drop a little bit, but besides that, I mean, playable experience. I mean, if you have a 2080 Ti, you could still probably pair this with an even weaker CPU and still have a good experience, but this gives a good idea of what the, um, the Xeon Gold can do, so. Alright, on to the next game. And now we're into a game of Halo Infinite, and I can already tell that it's performing much better. On this, uh, on the CPU, than our previous game of held out. Oh, never mind. I said that as we have a hit a lag spike. That's interesting. Um, I was getting around 200 FPS when we were loading into the game, but it uh, has since dropped to about 150. But still, it doesn't seem like a smooth 150. It's, it's kind of hard to explain. I guess in uh, frame times are kind of all over the place with the CPU um, struggling to catch up. Like, see that right there when I just killed that guy? Yeah. It's um. It just shows that it's hard to keep the CPUs having a hard time keeping up the GPU, which is to be expected. I mean, that's kind of the whole point of this test. This is Oddball, everyone's favorite game mode. Uh, here, here I am holding said Oddball. But uh, no, so this would be, I mean, you can't complain of 150 FPS, but obviously this would be a, um, this would be something where you'd want to maybe turn down the settings, get a little bit smoother experience, and you're probably not going to be pairing a 2080 Ti with this CPU. So, I mean, it kind of makes it a little redundant. Maybe I should have paired it with a, a more realistic CPU choice, but in this case, it's, it's really, we just really want to see what it's like with the CPU that you're not bottlenecked. And right now we're bottlenecked by said CPU performance. It just so happens to be, oops, 
So it happens to be that you will not get smooth frame times with this one. But there are different ones that have more um, uh, single core performance, but higher clocks, higher frequencies, and those are the ones you want to target. You don't want to get the extreme multi-core CPU like this one, uh, like this example that have like, you know, 16 physical cores. You want to shoot for something maybe like eight with the higher clocks, but they will be a little bit more expensive. So anyway, well, you know, this is a pretty good game so far. Get pretty good gameplay. Uh, let's go on to the next one. All right, I meant to mention in the previous clip, we were playing Halo Infinite at the high preset at 1080p. Now we loaded into a game of um, Starfield uh, with the medium preset at 1080p and no resolution scaling. I usually always turn up upscaling uh, just to get a better kind of understanding of how performance would be without any kind of frame upscaling. I think I mentioned that in all my videos. But compared to our um, previous uh, test on the ZA20, we could see we're getting a much smoother experience in Starfield. This is probably both a combination of the CPU and GPU, but being better. Um, we're getting ravaging around 60 FPS here on Aquila City. And um, compared to like, what was the 30 FPS we were getting, uh, the, um, the um, uh, ZA20 with the 980 Ti, this is much better. Uh, I mean, this is a Bethesda game, so you take your optimizations where you can get them. But um, here, let me start a ruckus in the city. Uh, Oh yeah, you can see the FPS dip as I shoot, you know? Uh, people are not gonna like this. I'm not gonna save this game, obviously. Sam Coe's no longer, oh, you didn't like that? Okay, eh, makes sense. I haven't played Starfield since the, um, I mean, really, you know, I kind of stopped playing it. I, I gave up after I didn't really like the um, <laughs> the game, you know, story and plot line. Uh, it's been a real disappointment, but you know what? Uh, maybe I get back into it eventually. So. I'm just killing people indiscriminately. Oh, wow, it's a big bounty I'm getting. Am I able to die? I don't, I don't even remember what difficulty I'm playing on. But as you can see, we're still getting the frame time issue. I don't know how well it comes over in the video, but I could see it kind of slow down and like chug along. But um, I don't know, it gives a better idea. It's much more playable than this was on the ZA20, but that's to be expected with a much more powerful CPU and GPU. So, all right, let's go on to the uh, next one. And now we've loaded into a game of Harry Potter, or Hogwarts Legacy, I always call it Harry Potter. Uh, we're playing with the uh, medium preset at 1080p, and let's see if I can go start blasting some things in the Forbidden Forest. Um, this is obviously performing a lot better than it was on the ZA20. I believe this is a pretty heavy CPU game. Uh, it kind of said, it barked at me. How do I get off the broom again? I kind of forgot. Uh, dismount, yep. Uh, it's another game I haven't played in a long time, or played, I only play when I've been, uh, uh, testing these games, uh, how do I, there we go, get out of my, all my death spells, you know, the cool ones, as they would say, but this is performing much better than it was on the, um, oh, no, there's a frame dip as I say that, still, you know, we're running into CPU issues, the low clock speed, the low single thread IPC, that's always what's going to hold back a system like this, but if you want to play the occasional game, I mean, you're not really needing high, crazy FPS, then this will work just fine, uh, as I was saying earlier, you, you want to target a, a different CPU for gaming in this case. We're starting to get to the point where the, um, in, in the old days, the the server Xeons were both high clocked and high core count. Like I'm thinking first gen, you know, core base Xeons, where you had a point blast somebody. Oh, someone's glitched. Oh, now they're not. So. Uh, what was that? Okay, what was I saying? The, um, <laughs> The first gen Xeons had high clocks and high high core counts, you know, I'm talking like 3.47 gigahertz, you know, 3.6 gigahertz, whereas now the modern Xeons really only have high core counts and, I mean, on, on the higher end CPUs, uh, uh, SKUs, of course, you, you can still get high frequency ones, but they're kind of, you know, crazily expensive or more expensive than they would be. Like you could still, you could get like a relatively well-priced, well-clocked Xeon from an older generation at a good price, whereas, you know, these modern ones are still useful for stuff, so that's why um, they carry a premium. But, I mean, we're still getting a great performance on this, you know, $18 CPU, so there's nothing to complain. Of course, the GPU is not $18, but if I were to drop this, uh, the settings on these, or at least tweak them, then we'd probably get a more consistent performance, but like you said, like you see here, it was, you know, it's pretty good. So, let's go ahead and go on to the next game. And onto a modern classic of Doom Eternal. I think I see that every time. Uh, we're running at the high or the um, so the ultra preset right now, and we're averaging around 200 to 300 FPS of Vulcan. 
I mean, this game has the secret sauce. It has done some great work with their optimization. So, but a a any of these games, uh, any of the Doom games, the Wolf Side games, see a little bit of dip there. Uh, again, we could play this, you know, something's disconnecting, reconnecting. Was that on my PC? Yeah, I think that was on my um, uh, recording PC right now. Uh, what was I saying? Alright, get back on the track of things. Um, it in their games, if you play like Wolfenstein or um, or Doom, either the 2017 version and this, uh, you know, Doom Eternal, I think, which is 2020, you get great performance on really any system in the GPU, as long as, long as it's a supported one. Like right now, we know with Wolfen, we're getting around to be able to do an FPS. We're more leveraging our CPU compared to any other game, and um, it, it's, it's really like I always recommend this game. It's a great game. <laughs> it's a great game to fetch park. It's a great game to play. But you can see some weird stuff as I approach these lights. I kind of see them, I don't know, do you see like, but I'm not being like, uh, uh, the anti aliasing or something. Something's weird, I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. But I'm a real professional. But here, let's see if I can launch myself. I'm just chainsaw one more guy. And, uh, let's go on to the next video. And now we've loaded into the Dead Space uh, 2023 remake. Uh, I've also now loaded into the final level of the game. We're playing the game at 10 EP with a medium preset. I don't know exactly where I loaded into, but I'm guessing it's probably nowhere good, as usual. Uh, let's see, this crew deck, uh, the tram station, uh, let me see if I can go find someone that will want to kill me. Uh, not really something that I want to kill. <laughs> but um, this is playing much better than it was on the Z820. Uh, I'm guessing it's mainly because of the better GPU, but the uh, CPU seems to be keeping up much. Uh, no, no, we're still getting the same kind of lighting effect issues. Uh, I could drop this down to low. Or tweak the settings too a little bit. Um, I haven't also figured out how to play, or I haven't passed the audio to my microphone yet, or my headset that I'm using to, you know, voice over this. So it's kind of hard to hear what I'm doing, or I don't, ha I can't hear what I'm doing. So uh, it's kind of hard to play, especially a game like this. You, you require a lot to be on sound. I wonder if I already cleared all these areas out. So, oh. wow, well, man, let me in. I oh, nope, I was just here. Yeah, maze like. If I, oh, where, where's my locator pointing me? Uh, find crude deck key. Well, maybe if I go do that right now. This is a great game. I highly recommend it. Uh, it's pretty scary. <laughs> so, uh, it's kind of expected. How do I force strip again? Oh, nope. Stasis owes me. You usually play stuff with a mouse and keyboard. No, not usually a big controller guy. Depends on what game I'm playing. But yeah, play this game if you like to get scared. Uh, or don't, you know. It's up to you. Wow, I haven't found a single person yet. I gotta go play some zero G basketball, but it's just some fire. Get some effects on the screen. Single person, I mean single necro, as I'm gonna say. But this is, you know, much more probably playable than it was in the Z A twenty, mainly probably due to the GPU and the better you know, somewhat to the better CPU. I mean we we did go up what? Uh, E5, V V0, so there's a second gen, third gen, fourth gen, and then this. So that's you know, three generations uh a jump. So big jump, but all right, let's go ahead and try another game. Prepare to counter attack. And now, uh, last but not least, the notorious uh, Battlefield 2042. This game was terribly optimized when it launched, uh, almost killed the franchise. Somewhat mostly killed the franchise. I mean, it was originally supposed to be a battle royale game, and then they kind of just pivoted last minute to make it a battlefield game. And uh, we got basically just like shit. So, I mean, I haven't played it recently, so maybe it's been better. But with what they did on the launch day, I, just, I, I don't know, I can't bring myself really to play it. But it makes for a good benchmark. We're playing at 1080p with the medium preset. And I don't know why River Tuner Statistics does not like this game. I wonder if it's just, you know, it's an EA thing. But I did enable the Steam overlay. We're getting about 160 FPS, 100 in, you know, around that, 100 around 130. Uh, probably get better better FPS if, or, or better fidelity if I increase the settings. Still see the occasional, you know, frame dip. Let's see if I can get somebody. Uh, I still see the occasional frame dip here and there, but it is not that bad. Oh, get shot from behind now. Oh, there's a robot. Uh, <laughs> got an assist. Oh, then I got killed. But no, uh, it was much better. I mean, I, I remember when I uh, played this on my, um, or a Dell Precision T5600 with a GTX 1060, and it was it was you know, like unbearable. That was when I around when it launched back in the uh, the pandemic, and I would just you know demonetize myself if I was monetized for saying that. But I don't know. I might I might try playing this again, but it's it, it just you know 
soured my opinion on it. I really hope that they write the franchise because I played so many hours of Battlefield 4. But, alright, um, it's good enough for, I guess, a good test suite of games. Let's go ahead and we will uh, go to my final thoughts. Alright, so my overall thoughts on the uh, CAG4 is that uh, it's a bit pricey for what you get. Uh, but then again, you get a much better system. Uh, my main takeaways are that you'll get a system that's supported officially by Windows 11. I think the, uh, in my personal, you know, professional opinion, the later Xeons are still the better buy. The Xeon E5, uh, V3, and V4, those are the uh, Haswell and Broadwell E generations. I believe those are, would be, are going to be fine because they have a TPM 2.0 chip on them and secure boot and UFEI. So those are the main features that Windows is looking for. I think the whole support processor thing is more of a gimmick. I think it's more of those ancillary features that it's really going to worry, but... Overall, I'd still, if you want something that you know is going to be supported and if you could afford it, uh, I think these, obviously, this is the better platform. If you want to do more gaming on a system like this, although you probably wouldn't want to buy a system like this purely for gaming, you could always get one of the lower core but higher clock CPU SKUs. I mean, in terms of how much feature rich, rich, richness you get in this platform is that, you know, you have your two um, slots here for, you know, you could put two NVMe drives, it's two NVMe drives. You can put your five hard drives. You could put another couple drives here. You have your two CPUs, and you have 24 DIMM slots. So, I mean, like, look at this, you know, amalgamation of RAM that I put in this system. Uh, it, you could, you know, if you have eight, you know, eight gig modules all just lying around, you could actually get a good, decent amount of memory for, you know, not a lot of price, assuming you don't have to pay for them. And you get plenty of PCIe slots with plenty, uh, plenty of power. So, if you could get one of these systems for cheap, or, or cheap or similarly priced to a, um, a Broadwell or, or a, a Haswell based Xeon system, recommend obviously going with this one I instead. But that's about it for this video. I'm going to go ahead and uh, take out my uh, 2080 Ti, put the original GPU back in, and get this system to be ready to be sold. So uh, probably going to list it on eBay. I'm going to set myself up for a uh, uh, torture there. But you know, uh, with this, I think it's better for me to do it on eBay than locally. Uh, Whenever I sell a system on eBay, it always ends up broken when I get when it gets there. But I'll take a risk this time. But all right, folks, that'll do it for this video, and uh, I guess I'll see you all in the next one. So later.